Now I'll be talking about use of body hair for hair restoration surgeries. What are the goals of hair transplant surgery in the mind of any patient who walks into our chamber? They want natural looking results with adequate density. They want the results to sustain for a long period of time and they want to do a complete coverage even if they have advanced grade of baldness which is grade 6 or grade 7. So why do we need body hair? As we know in advanced cases of baldness grade 6 or grade 7 the scalp donor reserve is finite and we generally need 7 to 8000 grafts for a decent coverage for the full area. So generally in one patient with grade 7 baldness the scalp donor can yield around 3000 grafts in first go. In second sitting we can harvest another 2000 grafts. Even after that they need another 2000 to 2500 grafts for complete coverage of the bald area with good density. So what is the need of body hair? We need additional grafts, for that we go to the body hair sites like beard, chest, abdomen and thigh. People who have higher grade like grade 6 or 7 generally have very good body hair because the baldness causing hormone the testosterone and dihydrotestosterone leads to very good body hair growth. And usually people want to jump to these body hair sites very fast. They want the doctor to do those areas aggressively. The body hair have genetically different characteristics than the scalp hair in terms of growth rate, hair cycle, telogen phase and the anagen phase. The beard hair have a different texture which is wiry, hard and they are thicker in caliber. However, since they are closest to scalp, they are the second best option after the scalp hair. Now the side lock hair which are in front of both the ears, since they are anatomically very close to scalp, they also behave like scalp hair when they are used for hair transplant. Up to 2000 grafts can easily be extracted from the beard of a grade 6 or a grade 7 bald patient without altering the cosmesis. If done in expert hands, in future a second sitting can be done in which we can harvest another 1500 to 2000 grafts. And the guy can still sport a beard. The rule of 50% applies to the extraction in the beard zone and if that is followed it still creates an illusion of reduced density but not bald patches. Other body hairs like chest, abdomen, thigh are less favorable in terms of texture, growth rate, anagen and the telogen phase. The success rate of extraction is less in these sites because of high transaction rates. The survival rate of these grafts is also lesser and ultimately they do not show up on the scalp as nicely as the scalp here. So jumping directly to other body sites is not wise decision. After many years of experience on body hair and managing grade 7 cases, we have realized that the ultimate result in terms of good hair and long term hair on scalp is important. Just because we know how to extract the grafts from different body sites, it's not enough to do that. So we should focus on the end result and the outcome. Scientific literature doesn't reveal much success of body hair transplant beyond the beard hair. The literature is not very promising and we have also started using body hair in 2012 and initially we were very enthusiastic about chest hair. But soon we realized that they can't be trusted and their success rate is not that high. We started managing all our grade 6 and 7 patients with strategic use of scalp hair and beard hair. It is very important to use beard hair judiciously. The front the frontal area should never get the beard hair, especially the hairline because it looks very odd and it would stand up. It should be always mixed with the scalp hair and the safest area for that to be put on is the mid scalp and towards the periphery of the crown. In the central part of the crown, the beard should not be used in isolation. And beard hair is straighter when it grows and we have to use a gel to make it look straight. If the beard hair texture is wiry, it would stand out from the rest of the scalp hair. However, if it is straight, it would blend well with the scalp hair. In our experience of 10 years and more than 4000 cases where we have used beard, we have observed that all good looking beard pre-operatively doesn't show up that well. That means success rate of beard is lesser than that of the scalp, maybe up to 80%. 
Sometimes the beard grows as early as one month and sometimes it takes even five or six months to just start showing up. We have also seen that sometimes uh, in the initial phase the beard grows very well. However, it may go on for a long telogen phase and then the density of that beard transplant might go down. So, in conclusion, beard behaves unpredictably in every patient. In some people, it turns out to be better than expectation. In some people, it doesn't turn out to be as good as expected. So, one should try to manage the baldness with scalp hair and medications and use beard as less and as late as possible. In our practice, we try to avoid chest hair and abdominal hair in managing advanced cases of baldness. Other rare sites from where we have extracted grafts are axillary area, pubic area and legs. The pubic area hair, they behave like beard hair. In our practice, we try to manage by scalp hair and beard hair. We don't go into other body areas.